Good morning, everyone. Council? Good morning. Okay, Mr. Marcus, when we left off yesterday, we were talking about the trip to Dr. Siemens' office. Do you recall that? Yes. All right, you went and picked the family up and you stayed there while they were in the dental office, right? Correct. All right, now, at that time, was there a film crew following the family into the dental office? I'll object. Asked and answered. Sustained. Didn't I ask about the shopping trip and not this? Maybe I did. I apologize if I did. Now you're testing my memory? I'll let you ask the question. Okay, and I apologize, Your Honor. Maybe I did ask it. But in any event, was there a film crew following anybody into the dentist's office? No. And was there, if I didn't ask it, let me ask this, so I cover both of them. Was there any film crew following the shopping trip to Solvang? No. And those were two separate occasions, is that correct? Correct. All right, now, you are familiar with the gate logs, is that correct? Correct. And I believe I ask you about this, but just to be certain as well, when you, are the gate logs kept in the ordinary course of business? Yes. That's something that you rely on on a regular basis, you and the security staff and others, on a regular basis to run the business at Neverland Ranch? Correct. All right, I'm going to ask you to look at a couple of different entries. Before I do that, let me just ask you if you know off the top of your head what date the trip to Dr. Cement was. I do not recall. And do you recall roughly when it was in the, the year, first of all, I think you said, was 2003, right? It was. Do you recall roughly when it was in the stay of the Arvizos? Was it towards the beginning? Towards the end? I honestly don't recall. All right, okay. With the court's permission, I would like to approach the witness with the gate logbook. You may. I'll tell you what. Let's do this, if it's all right with the court, why don't I just put them up on the screen? That might be easier, if that's all right, and I'm going to refer to Exhibit 334. And this is page MJ00171. And I'll slide it up so we can see the bottom there. First of all, this is for February 24th, 03. Does that appear to be correct? Yes. Okay, now, the trick is to look over your shoulder and then turn around and talk in the microphone, just as you did. That was perfect. All right, now, you notice that it says at the bottom there, Joe Marcus, and it looks like it was, Gray Van. Yes. What does that represent? It represents that I left the property at 1759 and returned at 2005 in the gray van. All right, and right above it, it appears that there's a reference there that I think says, Vinny, comma, Arvizos, 4, Pontiac. Correct. What does that tell us about that particular transaction? That Vinny departed the property at 1634 and returned at 1855. Okay. With four passengers. Thank you. I believe. So it looks like he left at 1634 and came back. He left at 1634 with four passengers and he came back at 1855 hours. Looks like you left in a gray van, 1759, came back at 2005, correct? Correct. And then if we look up here at the Arvizos, there's a reference to Gavin, Star, Develin and Janet, correct? Correct. And it appears that they stayed overnight. Is that right? That's correct. And then it looks like they all left at 1634 hours? Correct. That would be the same time as Vinny? That's correct. And it looks like one of them, Develin, came back at 1855? Correct. Is that the same time as anybody else you see on the list there? I believe they came back with Vinny. And then it looks like the others, the two boys and Janet, came back at 2005? Correct. Now, does that refresh your recollection as to when you took this trip to the dental office? Yes. Does that appear to be the date that that occurred? That appears to be. All right. In any event, looking at this, it appears that you, in fact, picked up the mother and the two children somewhere and brought them back to the ranch, correct? That's correct. All right. Now, I'm going to take that off and once again make an effort to keep the book in order. Let me ask you about another entry in the book, and with the court's permission, 
This is Exhibit 334 and it's page MJ00154. We've had that up before. May I put it up? Yes. Thank you. So we'll just show at the bottom here, for the record, for everybody's reference, that is the Bates stamp number, and I'm going to put this one up here. And there's a reference here that says, 1752. It appears to say, the kids are not to leave per Joe. Kids, meaning like Gavin, Star, etc. Do you see that reference? Yes. And that's on February 1903, is that correct? That's correct. Now, you've been asked about this incident both by the defense and by the prosecution, is that correct, by police officers? I don't. Let's put it this way. Not this particular log entry, but you were asked about whether or not you had ever given instructions that the Arvizo children were not to leave the ranch, is that correct? Yes. What was the reason that you recall for the Arvizo children not to be leaving the ranch? Before you look at that, I'm sorry, I should have started the other way. I don't want to distract you with that yet. Go ahead. The main reason on this particular situation was that the children had been known to pull up to the gate in vehicles, by themselves without an adult, driving one of Mr. Jackson's vehicles. So I didn't want the guards to allow them off property in a vehicle. That was one situation. There was also a situation where there was a I'm going to object as to foundation. Move to strike. Sustained. Your Honor, I'd like to not offer that for the truth of the matter, but offer it for his state of mind as to why he gave this instruction. You can do that, but that's not what you did either. So I'll strike that answer and you can go back and develop that foundation. Let me do that. Okay, as of February the 19th, 2003, were you aware? Were you aware of any incidents involving the Arvizo children using vehicles in an unauthorized fashion? Yes. And what were you aware of? That they had used the vehicles of Mr. Jackson's to drive around the property. All right, did that cause you any concern as the ranch manager? Yes. And what was your concern? Number one, their safety. Number two, the safety of the employees in the property. And number three, the vehicle itself. All right. And what was your frame of mind as far as allowing the Arvizos to leave the property on any vehicles, whether it be automobiles, vans or even ATVs? It was not to happen. Were the Arvizo children supervised by a parent at all times during February and March of 2003? No. Were there times when Janet Arvizo was not there? Yes. Now, was there something else? You started to respond. Let me go back and ask you. Was there something else in your mind around this time with regard to whether or not the Arvizo children should be allowed to leave the ranch? Yes. What was that? There was a film documentary that was. I'm going to object. No foundation. Not offered for the truth. All right. I'll overrule the objection. There was a film documentary that was going to be happening on or off the property, and I do not believe that that had been decided where exactly it was going to happen. And who was involved in that documentary? I believe Hamid Moslehi. Did you know Mr. Moslehi? Yes. How did you know him, or how long had you known him? For a few years. And you knew him to be an employee of, or a contract employee of Mr. Jackson, is that correct? Correct. And did you see him on or around February the 19th, 2003? I believe so. Okay, and what was he doing there? I believe he was coming to do the documentary. And what was your understanding when he first arrived as to where the documentary would be occurring? I believe it was undecided at that point. At some point was it determined that the documentary would be done somewhere else? I believe so. During that period of time, did you discuss with anybody whether or not the children should leave the ranch? During that particular, on that particular afternoon? Was there a period of time when you were trying to decide whether or not they should be allowed to leave without their mother? Yes, I needed, obviously, some guidance on that. All right, at some point, did you receive guidance? I believe so. And did you authorize the children to leave with Mr. Moslehi? I believe they did leave. All right, and now when you look at that entry, 00154 of Exhibit 334, does that seem to reflect an instruction that you gave that particular afternoon at about 5.52? That's correct. Did that, did you ever give any instruction to anybody to hold any of the Arvizos against their will? Never. 
I would like to, with the court's permission, put up two exhibits. I'll ask at once to do both in succession. 308 and 309, if I could. May I? Yes. Thank you. Exhibit 308 has already been received into evidence. May I see that? Yes. Exhibit 308 is a one-page exhibit. I'll put it up so we can see the exhibit number there. And then I'm going to pull it down, and see if we can do a little bit of a wide angle. There we go. Okay. Up at the top, it says, Neverland Valley Ranch Security Clearance and Guest Information. Are you familiar with this kind of document? Yes. And in the course and scope of your duties at the ranch, excuse me, is this the kind of document that is kept in the ordinary course of business? Correct. And what is the purpose of this document? Number one, to authorize access onto the property. And number two, to advise the proper people what the guests have access to. All right. Now, at this time, this appears to be for an arrival date of June 21st, 02. Is that correct? Correct. And the arrival is expected sometime in the afternoon, right? Correct. Who were the people who were coming in this particular group? I believe Chris Tucker, Gavin, Star Arviso, Adrian, Kelly, Develin, and Aubrey, I believe. Okay. Now, it said, Gavaline, there, but you take that too, it should have been, Develin, is that right? I believe so. All right. This particular group. Do you recall, in June of 2002, if this is one of the times that the Arvizos did, in fact, come with Chris Tucker? I believe so. Okay. Now, at the bottom there it says, special instructions, or, special instruction. I guess, general comment. Do you see that section? Yes. And what does this tell you? What is this supposed to tell the staff that, both yourself and all the people that work for you there at the ranch, what does this tell you all about? Tells me that the guests have full access to pretty much anything that they would like to enjoy at the property. Do you know if Mr. Jackson was even on the property at that time? I don't know. All right. Now, when it says, full access, that's what it says there, and then there's some boxes checked. They aren't boxes, and they aren't checks for that matter. There's some lines with X's on them, correct? Correct. And that outlines the different kinds of activities, right? Yes. And I see on there, quadrinners. And I'm pointing to it. You might take a quick look. Is that right? That's correct. That means this entire group, including the Arviso children, were authorized to take out the quadrinners. Is that correct? Correct. Now, does that mean they could do anything they wanted with them? Unfortunately, within reason. All right. So they could use them. They had full access to them, but they were supposed to use them within reason? Within reason. Okay. What do you mean by, within reason? Number one, they should wear helmets, goggles, gloves. That was at times an issue to enforce. Security would try to enforce that, of course. They were supposed to use them safely? Exactly. All right. And then I want to make sure I go over the head of the court reporter here, so I don't shine this in her eyes. There's golf cars, jet skis. All of that's okay. Is that right? Yes. So that was on June 21st, 02? Correct. Now I'm going to take down 308, Exhibit 308. Put it back in the book here. Okay. And I'm going to put up 309. And again, I'll just put that up for everybody's reference so we can see at the bottom, 309, and show you the top. This, again, appears to be the same type of document, is that correct? Correct. And this appears to be for 6 to 28, is that correct? That's correct. If you were to look in the logs, could you determine what year that was? If I were to look in the logs, possibly. So for right now, it says, 6 to 28. All right, do you know what year it was without looking at the logs? No. In any event, if we look farther down here, it appears that, well, I'm sorry, up at the top it says, Gavin, brother and sister, correct? Correct. You took that to pertain to the Arvizos? Correct. Okay, and then if we look down here, I'll do it this way, it looks like, quadrinners and Jet skis. Jet skis, it says, no. Correct. So apparently the Arvizo children were not authorized to use the quadrinners and the jet skis on that visit, the 6-28 visit, is that correct? Correct. 
We could have the lights again, if that's all right, your honor. Thank you. All right. Now, on February the 11th, early morning of the 12th, do you recall Janet Arvizo leaving the ranch with her children? In the early morning hours of the 12th, actually. Do you recall that? What was the date? February 12th of 2003. I'll object. Foundation. I'm asking if he recalls personally right now. All right. You may answer. I do not recall. Okay. Do you recall an instance where Jesus Salas took the family to Los Angeles in the middle of the night? I'll object. Foundation. Does he personally know about it? You may answer. Yes. And were you personally contacted with regard to that trip? Yes. Who contacted you? I believe it was either. I'll object as hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. The question was, who contacted you? I believe it was Jesus. All right. Were you there on the ranch that night, into the next day? No. What I'm going to do, with the court's permission, I'm going to ask to approach the witness to show him some gate logs. I'm going to object and move to strike his testimony in this area. He has no personal knowledge. There's no question. You may approach. The objection is overruled. Okay. I'm going to ask you to take a moment and take a look at the gate logs. And you're welcome to look at whatever you want in there that might help refresh your recollection of whether you were on the property the night of February 11th, onto the early morning hours of February the 12th. Okay, I believe that's a possibility. But I didn't spend the night there. That's what I thought you were asking. Alright, so as you look, so as you look at the gate logs, does that help refresh your recollection? Either it does or doesn't. If it doesn't, that's okay. Does that help you refresh your recollection as to whether or not you were there into the early morning hours of the 12th? Yes, I left at 1.15 a.m. All right, now, at the time that you were, let me withdraw that. Do you recall where you were when you were contacted by Jesus Solis? I believe I was home. So you think you were actually home by that time? And where do you live, generally? You don't have to give your address, but... I live here in town. In Santa Maria? Yes. Okay. Now, by reviewing the gate logs, the records of the ranch, can you determine what kind of a vehicle Mr. Solace used to transport this family on that night? You might need to look forward on the, to the next date. I'm sorry, I don't see it here. Okay. Okay. Do you know off the top of your head, or do you? I believe it was a limo. All right. In any event, whatever kind of a vehicle it was, do you remember? Do you have a Rolls Royce there on the property? Yes, we have a few Rolls Royces. Okay, whatever kind of a vehicle it was, was it your understanding that it was a vehicle that belonged to Neverland Ranch? Yes. And did Mr. Solace take that, with your permission? Yes. Okay, and he, I take it, returned with it the next day, is that right? Correct. All right, all right, we're getting close to the end here which is a lot of good news for you and everybody else. Let me ask about some of the employees. You had mentioned that you were the ranch manager and therefore in charge of the various departments through the chain of command through the department heads, correct? Correct. We have had some testimony from Brian Barron, and you may have mentioned already, you know Brian Barron was a police officer, is that correct? Correct. Were there other people who were former police officers or, well, let's start with police officers. Yes. Can you recall during the time you were there how many people had actual peace officer, law enforcement experience? Probably 5 to 10. Can you give us the names and associations of some of them, as best you can remember? I'm going to object, relevancy, as to this applicable time frame. I can. Just a moment. I'm sorry. Objection is overruled. Very well. Yes. There was retired Herman Stubblefield, who I believe worked for Santa Barbara County Sheriffs. James Wade, who first believe worked for Santa Barbara County Sheriffs. There was a gentleman from Santa Maria Police Department, Rudy Salinas, I believe. He was also retired Santa Maria PD. There was a gentleman from Grover, Kelly Cook from Grover, Grover Beach, I believe. And that's really all that comes to mind at the moment. Was there a retired military police officer? We currently still employ a gentleman that was a military police. Okay, who is that? Curtis Gordon. Okay, 
Where was Mr. Gordon at the time of the search on November 18, 2003? He was at the front gate. So he would have been the gentleman wearing a security uniform at the front gate? Correct. And he would have been the gentleman who was greeted by, or greeted, such as it was, the sheriff's officers coming through the gate with their search warrants? That is correct. Now, all of these people you mentioned, I don't want to go through each one unnecessarily, but did they, did each of the people you mentioned work there over a period of time? I mean, they weren't there for a day or two. Correct. How long did? Let's take the longest one. How long did the longest one work there, the one who worked there the longest? Probably Curtis Gordon, he's still employed with us. About how many years has he been there? Eight, ten years, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, now, in addition to police officers, did you also have people who worked at the ranch who were fire, fire personnel from fire departments? Yes. And can you give us an idea of roughly how many over the period of time you worked there? At least 20. Okay, can you give us the names and affiliations, if you can remember some of them? Currently we have two officers that work at Taft City Fire, one that works at Grover Beach, one that's full-time at Lompoc Fire Department, and there was many more that have left the property over the years and moved on to bigger and better things. All right, so when you say, bigger and better things, you didn't really mean that with Mr. Jackson sitting here, did you? No. Okay, but as far as law enforcement or fire careers, sometimes this is a jumping-off point, is that right? It's a stepping stone for them, yes. And sometimes this is a retirement job? Exactly. All right, now, with regard to the police officers, other than Brian Barron, were there any others who were moonlighting currently? They were police officers who are currently moonlighting. Let me withdraw that phrase, currently. Were there other people other than Brian Barron who, during this period of time, were concurrently working as peace officers actively in moonlighting at the ranch? Not to my knowledge. The others were retired police officers, correct? Correct. And with regard to the fire department people, apparently there were a number of people concurrently working for fire departments and working at the ranch, correct? Correct. Was it your understanding that all of these people understood the need to abide by the law? Correct. All right. And if they observed anything illegal or improper, was it their duty to report it to the staff, to their supervisors? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Did you have, as the owner, as the ranch manager, did you have an expectation that former police officers, former and current firefighters would also report any unlawful activities to the civilian authorities? Objection. Leading. Sustained. The people that you have just mentioned, was there any secret made of their backgrounds? No. Based on your discussions with Mr. Jackson, was Mr. Jackson aware that some or all of these people were either prior or current employees of police or fire departments? Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Was there any effort made to keep any of this secret from Mr. Jackson? Same objection. Sustained. All right. Now, do you recall the Bashir documentary? Yes. The Bashir television program? Yes. Did you see it when it was aired originally in February of 2003? No. Did you hear about it? Yes. Around that time, did it create a certain amount of buzz around the ranch? Yes. Now, you've been there during this entire period of time. Are there times when there is more media attention to Mr. Jackson at the ranch than other times? Yes. Do you recall back in, 93, was there a lot of media attention? Yes. Were there vehicles on Figueroa Mountain Road by the gate on a regular basis? Yes. Did that subside after, 93 for a while? For a while, yes. Now, you do tend to have people up at the gate sort of on a regular basis, is that right? That's correct. What kind of people tend to congregate up around the gate? All different types of people, from all different walks of life. People from other countries? Other countries, here in this country. What's their interest in Mr. Jackson, would you tell us that? Are they fans, are they? Some are fans, some just want to come and see where Neverland is. All right. Now, in early 2003, did there, was there an increase in the media attention at the ranch? I don't recall. 
Do you recall at some point there were media vans and whatnot coming to the front gate? Yes. When the Arvizos came to the ranch, was there any particular concern with regard to the Arvizos and the media? Objection. Foundation. Hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. Can you repeat the question? I'll have it read back. When the Arvizos came to the ranch, was there any particular concern with regard to the Arvizos and the media? Concern? I don't, I don't really understand the question. Okay. Were you made aware that the media had attempted to have contact with the Arvizos? Not personally. Objection. Leading. Not personally. Objection. Leading. Hearsay. Overruled. Not personally. Were you advised that the media was attempting to contact the Arvizos? In general, I'm not talking about at the ranch gate, but just in general. Yes, in general. What was your understanding of why the media was interested in the Arvizos? Due to the documentary, the Bashir documentary. Were you aware at some time, and I'm asking now for your state of mind, that there was a discussion regarding the Arvizos taking a trip to Brazil? Yes. Based on your personal contact with the Arvizos, did the Arvizos ever voice any objection to going to Brazil? Objection. Hearsay. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. Did you have occasion to talk to the Arvizos or be in the Arvizos' presence when the Brazil issue arose? Yes. Did the Arvizos at that time voice any objection to going to Brazil? I'll object. Vague as to which Arviso. Hearsay. Sustained as to. As to which one? Which one? Let's take the children. Did you have a discussion with the children, or did they have a discussion, or was this discussed in your presence? There was no objection at that point that I know of. Okay. What about Janet? Did you ever have a discussion or overhear a discussion where Janet was involved in some discussion, to use that word again, about going to Brazil? Only that they needed some assistance in finding a spot to take a passport picture. Did Janet Arvizo discuss that in your presence? It was in the presence of Vinny and Janet, yes. Okay. And did she, was she objecting to having a passport picture? No. Was she, what was she doing? What was she saying? They were asking for instructions on where they could go to get their passport picture taken. And was Janet asking for those instructions as well? I don't know if she asked personally, but she was standing right next to Vinny. And what was her demeanor at that point? They were getting ready to get in the car to head to Santa Maria to get a picture taken. All right, all right. And then one last area here, for now. Are you familiar with the kinds of fan mail that Mr. Jackson gets? Yes. And where is the fan mail delivered? Some is delivered to the property. Okay, I'm sorry. Of the fan mail delivered, I take it you haven't seen his fan mail that goes elsewhere, is that right? Exactly. So the fan mail that's delivered to Neverland Ranch is what I'm talking about? Yes. Where is that ultimately delivered? It's delivered to the Los Olivos post office and then delivered to the property. When it gets to the property, where does it go? Sometimes it goes to Los Angeles, and sometimes some of the nicer stuff we might keep at the property. All right. Now. When you say, nicer stuff, before we get to the distinction, what volume of fan mail comes to the Los Olivos ranch? Three boxes probably every other week. All right, and sometimes you'll get big packages, is that right? Correct. Sometimes people will send artwork? Artwork, books, clothing, ties, coffee mugs, gifts, just lots, lots of gifts. How about letters? Letters, lots of letters. Cards? Cards, yes. Whose job is it to go through and screen that, if anybody? We don't really have somebody doing that at this point. In the past have you had somebody screen it or does it just all go to Mr. Jackson, and say, here. Read your mail. No. Does it end up sometimes in the administration building? Yes. All right, and from there, you said something about, the nicer stuff. So going back to that answer. How do you make the decision as to what ought to go to Mr. Jackson himself to look at? Memorabilia. Just some of the nicer, nicer items that I think that he might be interested in seeing what the fans have sent for him. Okay. And you mentioned there might be paintings? Yes. Books? Yes. When you deliver this to Mr. Jackson, 
Does he tend to keep it or throw it away, or what does he do with the stuff? You would have to ask Mr. Jackson. Okay, well, looking at his house, you've been inside his house and his room, is that correct? Yes. And you're here under oath and we're not here to, you know, either please or insult Mr. Jackson one way or the other. Just tell it the way it is. Does Mr. Jackson tend to keep a lot of stuff all over the place? Lots of stuff. Objection. Leading. Sustained. Does Mr. Jackson, based on your observation of his premises, does he tend to keep stuff that's sent to him by fans or throw it all away? I believe he keeps everything. All right, I have no further questions at this time. Do you want this back? Do you have the logbook up there, Mr. Marcus? If I may approach to retrieve that, Your Honor. You may. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Mr. Marcus. Good morning. You have worked at Neverland since 1988. That's correct. Correct? You've worked there the entire time that Mr. Jackson has owned that property, true? Correct. Is there anybody at Neverland Ranch who has worked there as long as you have? Yes. Okay. Who would that be? There's multiple employees that have been there longer. All right. And you began in the maintenance department? Correct. You've been the property manager three years? That's correct. You have been a security officer at Neverland Ranch? That's correct. Tell me what period of time that was. I believe it was from 92, 93, through 96, possibly. Okay. Maybe a little bit. I might be off on the dates. When you were a security officer there, were you armed? Yes. And at present, as a property manager, you supervise everybody at Neverland, is that correct? Correct. And you supervise the supervisors, true? Yes. How often do you interact with your boss, Mr. Jackson, when he's on the property, let's say? Daily. Daily? And would you meet with him more than once a day? No, might speak with him. Okay. Do you ever have meetings with Mr. Jackson? Once in a while, yes. Does he ever sit down with you and tell you that he wants something changed at Neverland? Yes. And if he wants something changed at Neverland, does he typically talk to you or will he talk to other employees, more of a direct route? Sometimes he'll use the direct route. Okay, so there's not always a chain of command at Neverland, is that fair to say, in terms of Mr. Jackson's interaction with his employees? No, he'll sometimes go directly to the source if something needs to be done at that point. Or if I'm not available. And I believe your testimony is nobody outranks you at Neverland, true? I didn't say that. I mean other than Mr. Jackson. Is there anybody above you at Neverland, other than your boss, Mr. Jackson? No. Okay, so you answer only to Mr. Jackson in terms of your job at Neverland Ranch? Yes. And would it be fair to say that your job is to make sure Mr. Jackson is happy? Happy. Pleased. Pleased with everything at Neverland. Isn't that your job? I'm going to object. That's argumentative. Overruled. You may answer. That's fair to say. Okay. In fact, that's everybody's job at Neverland, is to make sure Mr. Jackson. Everything that's done at Neverland is exactly the way Mr. Jackson wants it, true? It's mainly for him and his guests, correct? Yes, but he's the one who decides what guests will be on the property. Objection. That's argumentative. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. And he decides what people will not be allowed on that property, true? Correct. Doesn't he sometimes make specific directives to the security staff, do not let this person on the property? Yes. And when he allows a guest on the property, sometimes he will take privileges away from those guests, true? Yes. And he personally gets involved in deciding what privileges individual guests will enjoy at Neverland. I'm going to object. That's vague as to time and subject matter. Overruled. You can answer. Repeat the question. My question was that he gets personally involved in deciding what privileges individuals will have at Neverland. I don't know that to be true, but... Didn't we just look at a log that said that Mr. Jackson allows the Arvizos and Chris Tucker, etc., to enjoy all the privileges at Neverland? Yes. 
so he does at times get personally involved in deciding whether they get to go horseback riding or not, true? Correct. Would it be fair to say that you probably know more about Neverland Ranch than anybody who works there, being the manager that you are and having your experience? Yes. All right. Now, you know about the telephone system there, right? Correct. And you know that it requires a three-button code to get out, to get an outside line, right? Correct. And if you don't know that three-button code, you can't get an outside line, can you? That's not correct. Okay. Explain that to me. Why can't? How can you get out? Let's say you're at a phone, and you previously testified that it requires a three-button code to get an outside line, true? Not all phones require a three button, but some phones do. Tell me which phones require the three button code. Mainly the outbuildings, the theater, the zoo area, the employees areas. A few of the phones in the main house, but not all of them. Some of the phones are direct dial where you would pick them up. And it's any code. There's no set code. It's any three digits. It could be 000. It could be 245. It's not a set code. But if you don't know there's a code, you can't get out, true? Objection. Vague. Overruled. You may answer. If you just pick up the phone and dial a number, you won't get out? That is correct. Objection. Vague as to which phones. Sustained. All right. Tell me specifically which phones in the house do not require a three-button code, specifically in the main house. In the living room of the main house, as well as I believe that, the library also. I think those are the only two that are direct dial. Do you know if the library requires a three button code, or not? I do not recall at the moment. I believe it's just the living room. What about Mr. Jackson's personal phone in his room? I honestly don't recall if it is. I believe it's direct dial. Are you aware that he has a private line in his bathroom? Yes. And the guest cottages? You neglected to mention the guest cottages. They require a three-button code out, don't they? Objection. That's argumentative. I'll rephrase. Did you neglect to mention the guest houses when you were telling us about phones that require a three-button code to get out? Objection. Argumentative. Overruled. You may answer. I actually didn't go through the whole list of phones. There's multiple areas with phones, as well as the train depot, the theater, the guest units. I move to strike the answer as non-responsive. Sustained. But I think what he's saying is that he wasn't allowed to finish the question where he was giving the list. And I think that's correct. All right. So you would include the guest cottages as being among the phones that require a three-button code to get out, true? Yes? I'm going to object. That's confusing the way it's phrased. It's vague and ambiguous. Overruled. You may answer. I believe it's direct dial, but I could be wrong at this moment, but I believe it's pick up and go. You believe so? I believe so. A moment ago did you say that the guest houses were included in three button dial out code? Objection. Misstates the evidence and argumentative. I think I'll allow the question. I think the district attorney is inquiring if he said that. Go ahead. I believe that they are direct dial. They do not require a three button code to get out the guest cottages, is that your testimony? At this moment I don't recall. All right. Now, you testified that Mr. Jackson made a number of improvements to Neverland. He added the amusement park while you were there? Yes. The water fort? Yes? Yes. Teepees, the trains? Yes? Correct. Video arcade? Yes. Actually, the video arcade was already there. But he put in the video games? There were some video games there before, when he first purchased the property. But basically the improvements that Mr. Jackson added were all attractions for children, is that correct, in general? Objection. As phrased, it's compound. All, or in general. Sustained. All right, I'll strike all in that question. In general. Yes. These improvements are for children, designed to attract, attractions for children, correct? Correct. And you've seen children when they arrive at Neverland? Correct. They go crazy when they see all this, don't they? Yes. I mean, they love it? Yes. Never seen anything like it, have they? Some children have not. And there's quads. 
Tell us what a quad is. It's a four-wheel, all-terrain vehicle. How fast will it go? One or two of them will go in the excess of 70 miles an hour. They can be pretty dangerous, can't they? Yes. So generally, would it be fair to say that quads are not allowed to be sent out with young boys without any supervision? I mean, would you put an 11-year-old boy on a quad and say, go have a great time, that goes 70 miles an hour? I didn't say all of them go 70 miles an hour. I said two of them do. Let's back up. How fast do the slower quads go? We're talking about a 50cc motor. They're very small, not very fast. Maybe 25, 30 miles an hour, tops. All right, and they can be dangerous? Yes. An 11-year-old boy could get hurt on such a vehicle, couldn't he? Yes. And generally, you would not, for safety reasons, send an 11-year-old boy out to ride one of these quads even if they just go 30 miles an hour without supervision, true? Yes. Or a 13-year-old, without any adult supervision, wouldn't be allowed to ride the quads, right? No, that's not true. Same thing with the jet skis. They can be dangerous, can't they? Yes. A child could drown using jet skis? Yes. And typically you require some supervision to send a kid out on the water with the jet skis, true? Yes. You mentioned a zoo, and I think you talked a little bit about the animals. You mentioned that they're all well cared for. Yes. Have you ever seen Mr. Jackson throw stones at the lion? No. Tell me about the lion cage. What's it look like? It's a cage with a few toys in it for the lions. Some logs. I mean, what exactly do you want? What separates the lion from the people who are looking at the lion? Wires. Okay. What do they look like? Did you want me to draw you a picture? No, I'm just curious. If you can describe it. Like a cage. Like. Is it like a bar? Bar or chicken wire, or what? No, it's not chicken wire. It's, it's eighth inch, I believe, wire that you would see at a normal zoo too. Okay, is it wire or bars? It's wire. Okay, and how is the wire configured, in terms of is it configured in squares, in diamonds, in rectangles? Squares. How big are the squares? I don't know. Can you estimate? I believe you probably couldn't get two fingers through. All right. The cage. All right. Now, have you ever seen any of the other animals abused in any way? I've never seen any of the animals abused. I'll withdraw my, the beginning of my objection. All right. So when children come to Neverland, within the bounds of safety, they get to do whatever they want. Isn't that fair to say? That is fair to say. They're treated like royalty almost? Yes. And kids being kids, getting into mischief is kind of part of the program, isn't it? Objection. Vague. Calls for speculation. Overruled. You may answer. Do you understand the question? Yes. Would you agree with that statement? Let him answer it. I'm sorry. Yes. And in your assessment of the Arviso children, you described them as, quote, a little destructive. That's correct. Okay. And you've seen other children there be a little destructive as well? Yes. It's common, isn't it? I don't know if it's common, but it does happen. Now, during your 17 years at Neverland, you had a first-hand opportunity to see a number of young boys visit Neverland, is that true? Yes. Okay, have you had a chance to see a number of these young boys who spend a lot of time with Mr. Jackson? Repeat the question, please. Have you had an opportunity to see a number of these young boys that you just mentioned spend a considerable amount of time with Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Jackson tends to form special bonds with these, some of these young boys, true? I'm going to object. Lack of foundation. Overruled. You may answer. Not just boys, but yes, I have seen him have bonds with children. Okay. And one of the young boys that Mr. Jackson had a special bond with was Frank Cassio. While you were there, did you see that? Yes. And Frank is now an adult. He's about, you said, I think, he's in his 20s now? I believe so. And when you were there in 2003, working, you mentioned, I believe you mentioned that Frank was there during that time. I believe he was. Okay. And in fact, he stayed there for several months in early 2003, didn't he? 
I don't know if he was there several months. He was in and out, yes. But he was on the ranch for over a month? That's probably fair to say. And he was working for Mr. Jackson at that time, doing something for him, wasn't he? Objection. Compound. Vague, and no foundation. Sustained on compound. He was working for Mr. Jackson at that time, wasn't he? I have no knowledge of that. Well, he had an office at Neverland, didn't he? He had a space, yes. He had a desk? I believe he did have a desk. He was working at that desk? I don't honestly know what he was doing. And this was at the same time that the Arvizos were there, true? True. And what he was doing had something to do with the Arvizos, didn't it? Objection. Foundation. Overruled. You may answer. Not to my knowledge. Well, he had a friend named Vinny there, didn't he? I believe so. Do you know what Vinny's last name is? No. And Vinny stayed there for about the same amount of time during that period as Frank did, true? Over a month. Not to my recollection. Okay. What is your recollection about Vinny, as far as the amount of time he spent at Neverland? I recall him coming and going a lot. And when Vinny would come and go, he would come and go with the Arvizos, wouldn't he? Sometimes. Not always. But often? Not always. And you saw Frank with the Arvizos at times, didn't you? Yes. You mentioned a time when Vinny was standing there and you witnessed a conversation with Janet, something to do about getting pictures. That's correct. For the passports? And it was Vinny that wanted to, was concerned about getting these pictures for passports, wasn't it? Vinny and Janet were standing there asking me for directions to a spot that they could get a picture taken. Do you know a man named Mark Schaffel? I've met him. Who is Mark Schaffel? He was a guest on the property. A guest of Mr. Jackson's? Yes. I'm going to object. This is beyond the scope of direct. Sustained. Have you seen Mr. Jackson form a special bond or special friendship with Aldo Cassio? Beyond the scope of direct. He's asked him about his, any improprieties. Object to a speaking response. I've looked to him to speak. I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Did you see Mr. Jackson, observe it, form a special bond with Aldo Cassio? They were friends, yes. What about Brett Barnes? Yes. Jason Francia, did you ever see him spend time with Jason Francia? No. What about Wade Robson? Yes. Jordy Chandler? Yes. Macaulay Culkin? Yes. Gavin Arvizo? Yes. Did you mention a Shane Brando? I didn't mention him. What about Shane Brando? Yes. Little Michael? Objection, Your Honor. Beyond the scope of direct in the court's ruling. Overruled. Little Michael? Do you have a full name? Omar Badi? Yes. Renew my objection. Motion to strike. Overruled. Mr. Jackson is very security conscious, isn't he? Yes. Are calls monitored at Neverland? No. Doesn't Mr. Jackson have a phone in his private quarters where he can monitor phone calls? Yes. So you don't really know if Mr. Jackson monitors phone calls? No. Mr. Marcus, doesn't it say in the Policy and Procedures Manual for Neverland Valley Ranch that employees acknowledge that their calls from Neverland Ranch can be monitored? Yes. And your testimony is that those calls are not monitored? Well, there's only two phones that you can actually monitor from. One is in my office, and one is at the house, and I don't monitor them, and to my knowledge, he doesn't monitor them. But you don't know whether Mr. Jackson monitors phone calls, do you? No. And didn't that policy go into effect when Violet Silva complained to you about Mr. Jackson listening to her phone calls? Objection. Calls for hearsay. Offered as impeachment. Sustained. Did anybody at Neverland Ranch complain to you that their calls were being monitored by Mr. Jackson? Objection. Calls for hearsay. You may answer. Nobody told me specifically that Mr. Jackson had been monitoring a call. But it was brought to my attention that somebody had picked up on a line and listened in on a phone call. But it was never said that it was Michael Jackson. Well, his is the only phone that can do that other than yours, right? 
Objection. Argumentative. I'll strike that. Sustained. All right. So no unauthorized people are allowed on the ranch. You've said that, true? That's correct. And in order to drive into Neverland Valley Ranch, someone has to open the gate, right? That's correct. And in order to drive out of Neverland Ranch, a security guard has to manually push something that opens a gate, true? That is true. And the policy at Neverland is not to let golf carts off the property, correct? That is correct. Same thing for quads, true? There was a gray area, because security will sometimes use a quad to go outside the front gate. Okay. But normally, guests are not allowed to take quads out? That is correct. All right, let's take our break.